Hi guys, welcome back to Fairy's Tutorial. In today's video, we'll be looking at the internal assessment for Cape Tourism Unit 2. So, are you a little bit flustered about completing that business plan? Guess what? Don't worry, as this video will provide guidelines in successfully completing the business plan. Stay tuned! Guys, let's get on the journey to produce A-class business plans. Let's go. Now, let us look at the format of the project, or we could say the format of your business plan, right? So you must have your cover page, and that must have the title, your name, and the date, right? Next, you'd have acknowledgments. But what I really want to explore today are the parts of the table of contents. We should have exec summary, description of product, mission, objective, and legal structure, market research, target market, competition and plan, an operating schedule, financial plan, bibliography, supporting materials, and appendices. So many things you're thinking, right? But never to fear as in this video we'll look at each component in details what is really required of you and the marks allotted for each part now the first part we're going to look at is the executive summary now this part is worth two marks so one your statement should summarize the main points and also the statement should be concise but you may be wondering, how do I write an executive summary? When do I write an executive when do I write an executive summary? And probably what should be in it, right? Now let's answer those questions. An executive summary is a brief introduction and summary of your business plan. Good. It should describe your business example so if you're doing a product a service or an activity your exec summary should describe your business also very important importantly it should highlight the key areas or main points of the business plan and you notice that we say main points right so it should actually as the name suggests it should be a summary summarizing all the main areas of your business plan and most importantly it should be concise right now your executive summary even though it is placed at the front of your document it should be the last thing that you complete right so you basically summarize everything that you have done the main points that you have done in your research such as the research techniques and you may want to describe a little bit about the target market, describe the product, mention the product, example like those. And remember, it's only the main parts that are required to be in this section. Good. Now, let us look at the description of the product. Now, this section is worth four marks. So for you to identify the product, so if it's a t-shirt, if it's a restaurant, you would get one mark for identification, good? And then you're supposed to describe three key components specific to your product. Now, to better able complete this section, let us look in detail what is required of you when you're describing your product. All right, let's go. So the description of the product should define the product or service to be sold. The definition provides the tangible and intangible attributes of the product that will be important to, to the consumer. Now, in identifying the product, you should also state what sector of the industry the product belongs, for example, does it belong if it's a if it's a restaurant which sector which sex, sector does it belong to right so you would have name of the restaurant and also the name of the sector which would be food and beverage 
awesome. Now, let us look at the mission, objective, and legal structure. And this part worth six marks. So you should create a mission statement, which is two marks. State two objectives of the product, which is another two marks. State how the company is set up, which has to do with like special licensings and laws, is also another two marks. But let's flesh out this area a bit. So the mission outlined the intent of the business and how it plans to differentiate itself from other similar businesses, right? The objectives should match the mission statement. In that, they will show the strategies that the business will use to bring its mission to pass. No. Additionally, when setting your objectives, you must ensure they are smart. And what, what do we mean by smart? Good. They should be specific. They should be measurable. They should be achievable, relevant, and also time bound. So when you're setting your objectives, ensure that your objectives has the SMART uh, acronym in it. So it must be specific, they must be measurable, they must be achievable or realistic, they must be relevant to your product, and they also must be a time bound. So for example, by the end of five years, what do you expect to accomplish, right? Things like those. Good. Now, the legal structure, on the other hand, addresses the ownership associated with the business. Types of ownership include sole trader, limited liability company, incorporations, partnerships. Good. The different type of ownership affects the level of protection that the business can enjoy. Also, ensure that you make mention of any special licenses or permits that are needed for the business to be operational. Good. Now, let us look at the next section, which is market research, target market, competition, and planned and plan no you can see that this section would have the bulk of the marks right so brief description of research including research techniques two marks number of visitors to destination one mark types of similar product that exists at destination another mark identify the target market one mark assess the target market two marks identify the competitors one mark and also to assess the competitors you will gain two marks now let us look at this in detail market research provides a justification for why the concept is plausible so why is your business plausible why will your product work right this justification is established through researching the target market via surveys, opinion polls, interviews, or focus group. Now, it is important for you to mention the research technique, whether it be qualitative, quantitative, or mixed method, and then you put the examples of data collection instrument that you have used. Good? Now, let us look at the target market. The target market refers to the actual demographic that will buy the product or service. It is for, is it for largely women? Is it just families, teens or men? The target market can also be broken down into age group. So your product may target persons between the ages of 18 to 60, right? Just an example. It may be employment, is it the middle low income um, persons you're catering to, is it the high end persons, level of education, right? So when you're, this, when you're assessing the target market, these are the information that you're required to have. The research will show which target market is most likely to buy the product or services. Good. 
So on your data collection instrument, you must have some demographic data there to help you to assist in assessing your target market. When we speak about demographic data, we're talking about age, we're talking about educational experiences, gender, uh, socioeconomic status, and stuff like that. Good. Now let us look at assessing the competitors because you're required to identify them, then you assess them. Now the method that you can use to assess your competitors is a SWOT analysis. And there are four parts to the SWOT analysis. You have strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and also threats. So what you can do when you're assessing their competitors, you look at their strengths. What are their strengths? You look at their weaknesses. And based on analyzing those things, what opportunity are there for you, right? How can you capitalize? How can you become competitive? Good. Next is the operating schedule. Now in this section, you're supposed to identify two risks associated with the product, which is two marks. Outline one strategy for reducing each risk, another two marks, and you're also to develop a timeline for implementing the product, which is another two marks. Now, let us flesh out this area a bit as well. So the operating schedule provides the expected opening date of the business the number of employees that would be required to operate the business efficiently and also key suppliers for that will provide products the operating schedule will help to avoid quality problems that are often associated with small business failure right so the upper the operating schedule is just basically a timeline that will showcase what you'll do at certain stages of the business until you have your launch of the business or your opening. So idea conception, market research, testing of product, all of those will come under your operating schedule or your timeline, good? Now you're going to identify two risks that are associated with the product. And in identifying the risk, these can be risks that pertains to the product or risks that are associated with operating the business that is also related to the product, right? Next, develop a timeline for implementing the product. And as I said before earlier, when you're developing a timeline, you start from the conception of idea to where you would launch the product. So for example, if you start in October 2020, idea conception, uh, November 2020, it's, an, it's another activity. So whatever you do, in whatever the process is, before you get to the launch, you make sure you have that on your timeline. Now, let us look at the financial plan. So you're supposed to determine the cost of the product, which is one mark, describe the pricing strategy, two marks, identify two possible sources of finance, two marks, and justify why you have chosen that source. So you state the reasons why you have chosen those sources of finance, and that would be another one mark. Now, the financial plan discusses how the business will be financed, by how much and over what period with what conditions. Main sources of finance, financing include banks, small loans, uh, schemes, microfinancing, credit unions, and it may also be your personal savings. Good. Now, additionally, we are going to look at some pricing strategies because you're supposed to price your product. Let's go back a bit. You're supposed to price your product and state why you have chosen that method. Good. So we have a list of pricing strategies here. We have cost plus pricing, competitive pricing, value-based pricing, 
price skimming and also penetration pricing so when you list the price of your product you're going to identify which strategies that you have used what if you look in the market and you realize that there's a lot of competition you would want to start with something like penetration pricing when you enter the market with a small you price the at a low price and then while you're there and building momentum then you would up the price of your product or services now finally we're at supporting materials so you're supposed to create a brochure your brochure may include a picture of your product service or activity just general information about your product probably possible location where your product will be right and then the model or prototype so you actually if possible you're going to make the product and you take a picture of it if it's an actual restaurant you may have to do something like a floor plan or a, or a menu good and based on the pro prototype and some of the information that you have used in the brochure then that would be information to validate your product and you will get your one mark so overall presentation organization of your ideas one mark spelling and vocabulary one mark and your bibliography another one mark it is very important for you to cite your source because you don't want to be have any plagiarism taking place now we're at the end of this presentation i hope that it was beneficial to you and now you're better able to plan those business plans all awesome you've made it to the end of the video now that you've watched i hope that you're better able to complete your internal assessment and produce a class business plans thanks for making it ferris tutorials if you haven't subscribed consider subscribing thank you for watching